Okay, so today um, I thought I'd make a video showing you guys how to change the shocks in a Volvo S70, V70, or an A50. Um, now this car's got 200 and a bit thousand miles on it, and I'm pretty sure it's still in the original shock, so it still rides okay, but I've been noticing lately that if you hit a harsh bump, um, the car or the suspension would kind of rattle, and, um, and you could also see when I push, push down on this bumper that the car just had rocks. So I, I figure it's time to change them. Um, now, in my case, I just bought um, the shocks individually, meaning that I'm going to be transferring over my springs and top hats. Um, so it'll be a bit easier if you guys just buy a, an assemble strut. And first thing you're gonna do is lift the car. Um, this car is fairly easy to lift. There's a point uh, you can lift the front end of the car on the soft frame right there. Focus. And on the rear, you can use uh, this point right here to lift up the car and then you can place the jack stands where um, the arrows indicate along the sides which are here and here Alright, now with the car up in the air, um, I'm, it's always good to give a good shake um, to make sure that it's not going to fall on you when you're working on it and then I'm going to take the wheel off. With that, I'm going to start with the rears just because I think it's going to be a little easier. Um, <clears throat> but before we head back, head to the back of the car, one thing that I would recommend is, especially if you live where it snows, um, as you can see, you're going to have a bit of rust on the car. So, you know, um, I'm going to use PB Blaster, um, but use whatever you have on hand or whatever you prefer to kind of soak these bolts down um, with penetrating oil so they come apart a little bit easier. Okay, so now we're at the back of the car and before you can remove the uh, rear struts, you have to um, undo the top hat uh, nuts that are on somewhere in this trunk of the car. 
Um, I see that I have these little plastic pins over here, over there, that I have to remove. And also under here, after we remove that, there's a few pins as well. Um, and hopefully that gives you access to uh, to the top half bolts, nuts. I'm going to be using this tool right here, uh, which is a push pin remover that I just got from Hover Freight. Works pretty good. I'm going to put this inside. So now you, if you come back here, lift this portion and you can see the top hat right there. So these are just held on by two nuts or bolts. Um, and if you remove that and the lower bolt, uh, it should just drop right out. So let's try that. <clears throat> All right, and these are gonna be 12s. I'm just going to break them loose for now. So on this side, it looks like there's a little tab or screw that's preventing this uh, cover from coming out, so I'm going to remove that. Alright, so this is a T25. Should've just done that from the beginning. Okay. Okay, so now we're at the back of the car again and we're gonna remove the lower um, shock bolt. So this one is going to be an 18. Now I have an impact but you know I just wanted to show you guys that this could be done or how you would do it if you didn't have one. Alright, I give up. Alright, so now I'm back at the top of the car or inside the car and what I think is gonna work is I'm going to now 
remove the rest of these bolts and that should take the load off the shock um, on the bottom and I should be able to just pull it straight up and out. Alright, so now we're under the car again and what I'm going to try and do is I threaded this nut slightly back in and I'm just going to try using a pry bar and see if the shock will move that way. Hopefully, you guys can see if it, if it does work or not. Alright, so that was kind of um, tougher than I thought it would be. So. Um, what I've ended up doing was I put the, um, the floor jack on the control arm like I said before. Um, I also let it sit in more penetrating fluid. And um, another thing that I did was I just took a big hammer and then I just hit whatever I could that was solid. Um, preferably you should be hitting under this but you know I'm going to replace the shock anyway so I just hammered it good over here as you can see and basically what I'm trying to do with that is I was wanting to kind of shock or break the rust off and then what I did was I slid my big breaker arm or breaker bar like this pried on it like that and just kept on trying and you know eventually it came out so sorry I couldn't get this one hopefully on the other side I should be able to film that for you so Let's give that a shot. But anyway, so as we now got that off, this should lift up from the top. Let's see if this side comes out any easier.
There it is. Alright, so like I mentioned before, um, I only ordered a shock here, so as you can see, um, there's no top hat. Um, so we're gonna have to transfer it over. So we're gonna have to undo this nut here, and that should be it. It should, and then I'll um, undo this nut, move the top hat over, um, tighten it back up with an impact, then it should be ready to go back in the car. Now, when I do reassemble it though, um, just because this was so tough to do the first time um, I'm gonna basically just cover the bolt in anti-seize before I put it back together so we'll see how this works hopefully these are still 18s also do you want to know how these are blown um, so here's the new shock um, now, I'm gonna try my best to compress this. See how that is? Now compare that to this one. You see how it's stuck here? So, yep. I wish my car could be this slow, but so and these these top nuts are gonna be 15s. So basically, the problem right now is that when I try and spin this off, um, what's going on is that there's this uh, sleeve inside the shock that's just spinning with it, so it's just spinning in place. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this cover off. And that exposes this now. You shouldn't do this to a new shock, but because I'm gonna replace it, I'm gonna, you know, I don't really care. I have a pair of vice grips. I'm going to match this as, you know, as, I'm going to clamp on this as tight as I can. Too tight. Now, by holding this in place, hopefully, this nut will come off. There it is. And I see that the new shock here comes with hardware, so um, let's see what we have. So I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see this, but what I think I will also need to reuse is this top uh, perch mount, whatever it is. Um, I've been trying to get. I'm. I've been trying to figure out how to get it off, and now I. Uh, I think I see how. Over here, you see a break um, in the collar. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a, a screwdriver to pop this off, and then transfer this over after that. All right. So I was able to get it started. I'm just going to move this around the rest of the way. All right. Uh, if I knew that I was going to have to transfer this over, I think I would have just bought new ones, but it's too late for that now. If I did. So 
Supreme Court. That's going to be incredibly annoying. Now, I'm not going to be able to torque this down. Um, if you had like a through socket or something, maybe you could, but you know, um, I think it'll be fine the way it is. This, um, this kit came with locking hardware so I'm just going to tighten it down the best I can with my hand and then we call that good all right now the next one all right so now we're ready for reassembly um, but I just took these strut mount bolts that we took out from earlier and what I'm going to do is I just have a wire brush and I'm just going to clean it up the best I could just because these were pretty rusty when they came out and difficult to turn, so... <sighs> I mean, it's still not great, but... Better than before, at least. And while I'm doing this, I guess I'll also tell you that um, when we go to reassemble the shocks, what I will do is I will put the shock through the top of the car first, um, mount the bottom nut on the shock, Tighten that to spec, lower the, uh, well, at, get it started, and then I will um, tighten down the strut bolts. Torque those to spec, um, put the car, simulate the car right height, and then tighten the lower um, shock bolt. So, all right, let's do that. Also, what I'm gonna do while I'm down here is this bolt right here um, that was so hard to get off last time. Um, I'm just going to cover that with anti seize before I put it back together.
and the torque spec for this bolt is gonna be um, 59 foot pounds. Now, um, you can come back to the car and then um, install the top half bolts. Um, the torque spec for these is 18 foot pounds. Alright, so what I just did now was I brought the jack over and I actually ended up placing it under the control arm again. And the reason why I did that was um, if I let the wheels droop, then you know the shock is fully extended and the lower shock mount pulls the shock to the bottom of the car and it makes it difficult to turn the top mount to align these bolts. So if you're having the same issue, um, just you know put a little bit of pressure on the um, on the control arm, lower control arm, and you should be good. Alright, so we are finally done with the rears. Now, um, what we have left to do is put the trunk back together and we are good. Alright, so that's about as far as I'm going to be able to get today, I think, so I wanted to do a little more, but I think the rears just took a little bit longer than I thought. I think what I'm going to do before I wrap up tonight is I'm going to once again um, hit all these points um, with PB Blaster, let it sit overnight. I think some important, um, well, kind of what you're going to be working with tomorrow and what I'm worried about are the sway bar end link right here. That's... 100% gonna break off. Um, strut bolts, they're fairly big hardware so it should come apart very easily. I'm more so worried that the spindle 
may be seized to the strut, but figure that out when the time comes. But you know, there's a McPherson front, so it should be pretty straightforward um, as long as knock on wood, nothing breaks. So we'll pick it up tomorrow.